Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous 72 degree night. 72 degrees here on Sunday night, December 15, 2019, heading to 32 by the morning, I hear. You're talking about frost on the pumpkin tomorrow. But I am taking my final look at the uh, Optimist Club Christmas tree lot. I am retiring from the Optimist Club Christmas tree lot. I have sold my last dead, burned out tree to a clueless fucking moron for $12.50 an hour in my life. Alright, say goodbye to the Christmas trees. What do you think? Is it time to say goodbye to the Christmas tree lot? There's a bop. I am ready to say goodbye to that Christmas tree lot. Good God Almighty. And, uh, I've got to say, guys, all joking aside, parting is such sweet sorrow. It is a bittersweet parting saying goodbye to my clueless, lovable friends at the Optimus Club Christmas tree lot. Uh, you know, really is nice folks. Those are some of the nicest folks, the Optimist. Truly are, I mean, all joking aside, they are the nicest folks and uh, a hell of a lot nicer than a lot of goddamn doomers that I know of. And uh, I have been doing this off and on since I was 16 years old. 16 to 60. 44 years off and on selling dead trees to clueless fucking morons. Oh, Jesus, I remember. It was Big John Papadopoulos. Big John in it. Land of Georgia when I was 16 who trained me in the Christmas tree business. I remember that man telling me at 16 he said dude you've got a, the makings of a Christmas tree man he told me and uh, what he was trying to get me interested was that uh, I remember him saying that this is the only job where you basically work from Labor Day to New Year's. You, that's it. You, you work four months a year. He says you will make a year's worth of salary. You know what I'm saying. You will make 12 months worth of money in four months and just have eight months to kick back. You know, to hang out, kick back, travel, enjoy your damn life. Uh, for eight months a year and I should have listened to Big John what is say probably what is say myself a heap of fucking uh, work well, I mean it's hard it's hard damn work but uh, then you have eight months to recover there you go should have listened to big bad John Papadopoulos but anyway I didn't so uh 44 years of wage slavery but uh anyway i'm done with it i am retired from the christmas not just from the optimus club christmas tree lot but i am retired from the christmas tree business and uh you know it's kind of weird this is you know doing this christmas tree lot thing for three weeks a year now i've only didn't work six days this year but uh you know for the past five years these three weeks working at this christmas tree lot is pretty much my last my you know my final link to normies uh where for three weeks a year 
I got to, you know, hang out with normies, not just any normies, uh, the Optimist Club uh, normies selling dead trees to clueless fucking morons. And, you know, and, and, and by f finishing this job, it's, you know, it's like I am severing, I am severing like one of my last ties to the non doomosphere uh, you know, I mean, I've still got my picking buddies in Austin, uh, so, uh, so they're, you know, pickers are, are, are certainly normies, but they're normies with, uh, you know, with something to recommend them, which is a little bit out of the, uh, bell curve, you know, uh, pickers and singers and whatnot so I will I still have about four months of being attached to that brand of normies but you know what I'm saying is it, it but they are kind of the, a special you have to put an asterisk by uh, pickers particularly in Austin Texas uh, they're not quite the level of just normal normie uh, and so you know now that I am done with this I, I am done with my main tether to the world of normal people and it's just I don't know exactly what that means uh, it means that I am just done with normies I I have just been, I have cast myself pretty much into the doomosphere, I guess, for the rest of my life. So what? Oh, we are see what the traffic looks like coming into the big uh, Christmas lights show in Austin. So what this is, this traffic, you see all the, you're going to see all these tail lights in a minute. What this is is the annual traffic jam from hell. So every year uh, for like 50 years now, Austin has had this thing called the Trail of Lights. The Trail of Lights, which is this really cheesy ass. I think I've done a couple of videos in the past. It's this unbelievably cheesy, uh, low-tech, uh, <laughs> You know, it really is, on one level, an embarrassment to Austin. So every year, these people, thousands and thousands of people, uh, get into this, you know, get into this unbelievable traffic jam so they can go uh, to, the, to this ridiculous, cheesy-ass uh, Christmas lights show. Uh, good God, if you can see the line on the other side, I mean, this is, uh, you know, on the access roads on both sides of the freeway, bumper to bumper, this is a normie, this is probably the most normie thing in Austin. The last time I did the, the Christmas tree lights, uh, I, I ate some mushrooms, I was shrooming. So on now on mushrooms, if you do, now I do highly recommend the Austin Trail of Lights on mushrooms. And you can be sure that a lot of the people on the Trail of Lights are doing mushrooms. So with that little asterisk, uh, I highly recommend the Trail of Lights on mushrooms. But if you really want to see the Normie Parade, but, uh, you, you know, and I have just really this year, even more than most years, just watching normies, just trying to figure out normies and, and you know, and especially these breeders, of course, looking for a Christmas tree is, is uh, you know, it's this, this family affair 
and just the you know the whole family these nice families with these beautiful kids and the dog and uh, you know, sometimes there's three generations they got grandma in the wheelchair and uh, they, they got uh, the, the baby in the in the backpack uh, and, and I just you know just just I try to eavesdrop on on what people talk about now obviously the people buying the trees are talking about you know the mainly the price of the tree is their most is their biggest concern uh, but the, the people who work there like I mean I spent six full days there with you know like about ten of us work in the lot and it is you know this the first weekend in December was in the 80s and the third weekend and so uh, I don't know what that I feel like the temperature had to have been 85 degrees uh, today on December 15th in Austin and I mean so even when we're talking about how the trees are burning up and how much more water we've had to uh, spray on the trees this year uh, not one mention I never heard it mentioned uh, the the bigger picture of, of this these record hot temperatures in December uh, this year it ne never never mentioned and uh, I, I, I'm assuming it's because it just never crosses their mind. You know, I watch these families. Uh, they've, uh, you know, they've got two of them running around like little banshees. They've got one in a fucking backpack. Uh, good God, how many pregnant women uh, coming through there. Uh, just popping out their little bundles of joy going off shopping for their god you know pulling up in their SUV shopping for their goddamn Christmas tree everybody talking about Santa uh, j just completely oblivious to the uh, the horror uh, unfolding on this planet. I mean, completely oblivious to the unfolding horror uh, on, on this planet as they just uh, pop out more and more uh, of these uh, of these little brats, uh, you know, buying their goddamn Christmas tree, going to the fucking trail of lights. To look at the goddamn uh, Christmas lights burning up all of this electricity uh, you know the the Austin Christmas tree is made from a big cell phone tower uh, is what they they dressed up a cell phone tower as a Christmas tree that is our big Christmas tree in Austin well I guess the state capital might have a real Christmas tree I don't know and uh, it's just like it's fucking, you know, 1952. Uh, it, <laughs> it's just the, the same fucking, it, look, it looks a lot like it did, you know, when I was, uh, you know, I, I mean, I look at these five-year-old kids running around the goddamn Christmas tree lot. And I, rem I remember, uh, I can still remember going Christmas tree shopping with my mama, uh, you know, buying the damn tree and loading it in the car and all of this shit. And, and here we are, uh, you know, 55 years later uh, on this planet and, uh, they, they, you know, looking... Uh, Look, looking like it did when I was five years old. Except I don't think it was 72 degrees. Uh, I, I don't remember 
it being 72 degrees uh, shopping for a goddamn Christmas tree with sweat running down my goddamn face. Maybe it was 72 degrees in Atlanta, Georgia 55 years ago on December 15th. I don't know. Uh, but you know what I'm saying. And just, and just trying to wrap my head around being a fucking normie. I just, you know, you want to go up to these people with, with these little newborn kids and their fucking bellies sticking out eight months pregnant. You want to fucking slap them. Say, do you realize you are guilty of child abuse? You, you are guilty of the sin of child abuse, which is what breeding is. Breeders are guilty of child abuse. Bringing a child onto this planet uh, is child abuse. It's planet abuse. It's child abuse. It's certainly self-abuse. Uh, it's the most masochistic thing you can do. And, uh, I mean, what the fuck is going through these people's minds? <clears throat> and they're the nicest folks. You know, getting their picture taken with Sancho Claus and... Oh, God. You, you, you know, you honestly don't know whether to laugh or cry. Uh, just how completely fucked these little children are. Completely fucked. I mean, Holden Caulfield realized it in 1960. You know, in Catcher in the Rye. Uh, Holden Caulfield knew goddamn well, and uh, J.D. Salinger knew how uh, fucked uh, these little kids being born uh, the year I was born, in 1959, that they're fucked. Uh, and, and that wasn't even talking about, you know, the state of the planet. Uh, what Salinger, you know, is talking about, just the state of America. Just the, uh, this as the American dream uh, what was what was being shattered? Uh, I think that book came out in 1960 uh, about the dystopian American dream, the crumbling American Empire. But with uh, good God, what would J.D. Salinger have to say? <clears throat> about this fucking bullshit. Good lord. Anywho's. But I am uh, unplugging from my last, from my single strongest connection to the non-doomosphere. And uh, I really don't know if that's a good thing or not that I have pretty much just completely surrendered myself to this black hole uh, in my life. A few more months of picking with my clueless, lovable pickers in Austin, Texas, and I don't know what my life is going to look like when uh, I become a snowbird and live half my life in New York and half in Florida. I mean, it, it, it's going to take it, it's going to take one of three forms. Either I make some normie friends. Uh, I only make friends here in the Dumasphere, or I just just completely surrender and just uh, and just spend more and more and more of my life. Uh, alone, you know, sitting around alone uh, with my thumb up my fucking ass, sitting around waiting for civilization to collapse and waiting around to die. Uh, it's going to be weird next Christmas tree season. I don't even know. I'm assuming I'm going to be in Inverness, Florida next Christmas. I don't even know. Uh, oh, speaking of Inverness, Florida, uh, I did make my, uh, I finally 
Uh, I'm having a little better luck with landlords and my well, landladies in my life than I am tenants. Uh, so at least I finally got my landlady. So I'm going to be, I rented a campsite <clears throat> for from January 15th to February 15th. And then uh, we've rented the campsite uh, for the great Doomer meetup for the Humpty Dumpty Tribe Collapse Chronicles meetup. This year will be at Potts Preserve in uh, Inverness, Florida for the February full moon. We've got it rented that this gorgeous campsite for February 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th, which will be the full moon. It'll be beautiful. But that is a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night. Just understand the the Doomer meetup is going to be Monday through Friday, uh, not on the weekend this year. So uh, put it in your calendar for the February full moon for the Doomer meetup in Inverness, Florida, February 17th to the 20th. But anyway, I have got a veggie. Well, I have to decide. Do I go for the veggie burger or the turkey burger when I get home? And uh, I have got a margarita with my name on it on this gorgeous 72 degree night waiting for Jack Frost to arrive at some point during the night the wind will change the winds will change in Garfield Texas tonight and we will drop 40 degrees by morning and uh, I get to look forward to my deep tissue massage tomorrow to get my herniated rib whacked back in place that's my excitement tomorrow. But anyway, guys, another another connection with the normies severed in your old doomer, depressed, collapsitarian life. Get out there and enjoy normie society while you still can. Bye, guys.